24-year-old Rita Curran was known as a sweet, shy, and beloved second-grade teacher. She had recently moved into apartment in Burlington. On the night of July 19, 1971, Rita's roommate invited her out for a late dinner, but Rita decided to stay home. When her roommate returned around 1 a.m., she discovered a horrific scene. Rita's body lay on the floor, naked, beaten, and strangled. There was no sign of forced entry, no robbery. Her purse sat untouched. Evidence was collected, bagged, and labeled, including a Lark brand cigarette. Detectives questioned and cleared her roommates and their boyfriends. The newlyweds living upstairs both stated that they were home all night and hadn't seen or heard a thing. With that, the investigation turned elsewhere. The community of Burlington had been on edge. There were reports of peeping toms, break-ins, and even other assaults. Rita herself had been receiving strange phone calls, with only the sound of breathing on the other end. The investigation began to focus on the theory of an unknown serial offender. Speculation grew, with some even suggesting Ted Bundy was the culprit. And then, the case went cold. Rita's parents passed away, never knowing who killed their daughter. Her roommates moved on. The newlyweds from upstairs eventually divorced, and one of them became a Buddhist monk in Thailand. For decades, the case file collected dust. In 2014, with advancements in DNA technology, investigators ran evidence through the CODIS database but found no match. Five years later, in 2019, a new team of detectives reopened the file. This time, they turned to forensic genealogy. DNA from a single cigarette butt found near Rita's body was sent to renowned genealogist Cece Moore. She built a family tree that pointed directly to one man, William DeRoos. Remember the newlyweds living upstairs? The Thailand monk? When detectives re-interviewed DeRusse's ex-wife, she finally admitted what she had hidden back in 1971. She confessed that on the night of the murder, she and William had argued and he had stormed out of the apartment. He returned a short time later. When police came knocking, he warned her to lie, telling her that if she didn't, his prior criminal record would make him a suspect. So, she did. For 50 years, her lie had shielded a killer. Shortly after the murder, Darus left Vermont. He traveled to Thailand, where he became a Buddhist monk. He had deep, lifelong connections to Japanese culture. He was raised for 30 years by his Japanese stepmother, and as an adult, he met his wife at the San Francisco Zen Center, a Buddhist community with strong Japanese roots. He resurfaced in San Francisco in 1974. Then, in 1986, William DeRoos died of a drug overdose in a hotel room. In hindsight, Lark, an American brand far more popular in Japan than in the U.S. at the time, made the cigarette butt less a random clue and more a direct link to the killer. In 2023, police officially closed Vermont's oldest cold case. Rita's surviving brother and sister finally had an answer. Her parents never did. They live among us. <laughs>